Mr. Franklin, and in this video we're going to take a look at the catapult. We're going to talk about it from how does it work, some very basics. So this drawing might be a little bit harder to read because um, of all the detail that I've already put up here, but if you look at both of these catapult designs, while very different in form, they are actually very much the same in function. Okay, and I've got it drawn like this. Yes, I do. Okay, so first thing we'll notice in common, they have this tower. They have this tall piece sticking out. Okay, they have a tall piece sticking out. Then they have a base of some kind. So this one's got a base. This one has a base. Okay, then it has an arm. There's an arm, and then there's an arm. At the end of each arm is a cup to hold the marble, and then there's a rubber band attached to the arm. Here in the center is a fulcrum, about, and the fulcrum is the point which the catapult rotates. So it's the point about which this rotates, and then we have the rubber band that we pull back and let go. Now one of the rules is the rubber band has to be attached between the fulcrum and the cup. It cannot be attached down here. If you Google catapults, you will see a lot of them where the rubber band is attached on this side of the fulcrum. That's actually a trebuchet. We're not doing those. We're doing a catapult. It should be attached here. Okay? Okay, so that's the side view. Oh, also one more piece. They also have a support that supports the tower that's connected to the base. This one also has a support connecting the tower to the base. Because when you pull back with those rubber bands, if you don't have the support, it'll bend and you'll have issues. Okay, then we have a front view. So front view, we have the tower, we have our base, and then we have, you can see the fulcrum, okay? But I also want to point out there's a thing here in the middle that's important to pay attention to. So front view. We have our tower, we have the base, we have our fulcrum, and then here we have a support that's in the middle. So we have a support in the middle that helps keep the catapult from collapsing on you. Now, both of these are perfectly valid. Both of them have done okay. One is not necessarily better than the other. Just know that you still have to meet your minimum requirements of keeping it under 130 grams. What am I gonna do to get the maximum throw of a marble? What do you think will get it the most? Okay, so, and the key word we're gonna, I'm gonna give you is, how do I get maximum? range. Okay? That might be a key word. That's going to open up a whole can of worms of physics that we haven't talked about in class, if you Google it, but that might be one you talk about. Okay? So how do we get maximum range if catapult the marble is going like that? Okay? That's one thing I can be looking for and thinking about. And if you run into physics you don't understand, you're welcome to come in anytime and ask me about it and we can talk about it, okay? But make sure you've read through it and have at least a basic idea of where you're confused and need help on it. Okay, so what do you think on this might give it maximum range? What might you be wondering about, okay? so? We have a limit of how much mass I can have, but you might be asking, how tall can I make it? How tall can I make the tower? How tall? How long of an arm? What type of rubber band, which in your supplies, the rubber band is a number 64 rubber band, so if you want to test them, just know that I'm only going to give you two rubber bands, and that's for the day of the contest. So if you want to practice with your catapult and test it, you need to get your own rubber bands. The number 64 is what you look for when you go to the store. 
Um, and you can find them at any Walmart, any store. Okay, let's see. What are the questions? Okay, does it matter where I put the rubber band? That might be a question. Does it matter how far? So this one you can tell stops. Does that matter? Or do I want it to go all the way up to the top? Okay, and that might be angle. So we might be looking for a question of angle. Okay, things to think about. So we got maximum range. We might think about um, a lever. We might think about what, what's gonna make it go. We're gonna be dealing with velocity, okay? We might be dealing with momentum. Or even impulse. Okay. So there's lots of different topics to think about. Some of these might help you proceed and think about how to. You need five to do your uh, research. There are more on your project description document in Canvas, but you need at least five to kind of start your research with. Okay. And more importantly, you got to think about how does this affect my build? Do I need a taller catapult with a longer arm? Do I need a smaller one? Okay. And also keep in mind that what you see on Google, if you Google catapults are usually for kindergarten or middle school and they do not look like this. Okay. So these are a lot closer to what you should be building. So I believe that concludes this video on the catapult. So if you have any questions, please see me in class and I'll see you in the next video.